Jesus. Only that God, He and He alone, will bless you for what you are going to do in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So I welcome you and all our brethren on the platform as well. I welcome all of you to this fellowship. Our sister, I'm going to see you. Uh, um, Sister Josepha, Sister Tiluma, and Sister Christiana, and Sister Priska, God bless all of you for joining us today in the mighty name of Jesus. As I said to you, what, is, what was she talking about? As I said to you last Sunday, it is my plan that today will be the conclusion of our teaching on the new birth and the other matters. But as I work, as I studied, as I studied last night, And as I was preparing my notes for today's service, I started, I started developing some doubts as to whether this, thing, this teaching can be concluded today. I will do my best to conclude it, but uh, if I'm not able to, then it means we will uh, continue next on. I had already instructed our uh, admin yesterday to uh, bring out on our platform that next Sunday will be question and answers because I haven't spent all these weeks listening that those children to be quiet. I haven't spent all this all these weeks teaching on this subject. I believe that you must have questions. And my plan is that we will end this whole teaching on a question and answer basis. So I instructed our admin to put out on the platform for next Sunday question and answer. But as I said, if I'm not able to do that to finish today, then we will continue next Sunday and upper Sunday will then be question and answer. I'll be disappointed, let me state very clearly. I'll be disappointed. Please silence Emmanuel. Please disturb me. I'll be disappointed if it turns out that the church says. Oh, we understood everything. Please don't deceive yourself. The new birth is the only reason why you are in fellowship. There is no other reason for coming to church. And there is no other reason for which Christ chose to establish his church. It is only for the new birth. That's God's answer to what Adam did in the Garden of Eden with his wife. Because God's word cannot change, never will be altered. So it is absolutely necessary that his original plan and purpose will be achieved. So you see, you know, If there be a good to the church, then it has to be that things must get back to as they were in the Garden of Eden. So please take this matter very seriously. And don't allow, don't allow the enemy to deceive you by making you think you have the answer. And don't feel shy or ashamed to ask. 
Nobody knows it all. I'm teaching you here by the grace of God, but I have never on any day told you I have all the answers. Never. I can't. God's prophet to the age did not have all the answers either. So I'm just going to say to you, as much as I know, and the Holy Spirit is the teacher, not of me only, but for everybody. If you want the Holy Ghost to teach you, he will teach you. He will work. That's the part of God that does the teaching. So having said that, so as I said to you last uh, last week, I said we are going to end by getting back to how we started. You will remember that when we started, what was on the platform, and we still remain on the platform, is the issue of new birth, Holy Ghost baptism, adoption. Are they the same? One and the same thing. That was what has brought about these 14 weeks of teaching. We want to be absolutely certain. When we talk about the new birth, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, these are the words you see, we, we, we use. The new birth, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and adoption. Are they saying one and the same thing? That's why we started, and we are going to end in the same way by asking, by addressing that issue today. If you finish it today, fine. If you don't, then we'll certainly conclude it. The Lord, tired of keeping us and rapture does not yet strike, will continue next week. Now, those of you who are very good on the internet, you can check out something. There's a book you can check out. Except for the little kids here, I don't see any one of you who was born into this message. You were already in some churches, in denominations, and all that before the message started getting to you. Therefore, you have come under all sorts of influence. So those of you who want to check things out, you can check out a book called or titled Christ Paralyzed Church x rays Christ Paralyzed Church x rays Christ Paralyzed Church x rays it was written by X ray, that X ray, very good. X ray, X dash R A Y E T. Christ paralyzed church X ray. I have deliberately given you this title. This week. It's written by a man called Dr. Mark Coxon. Dr. Mark Croxon, I've got that for you. M-C-C-R-O-S-S-A-N. M-C-C-R-O-S-S-A-N. A lot of the churches today, whether Protestants or Pentecostal, A lot of them, what they are teaching on this issue of the Holy Ghost, 
is heavily predicated on what is in this book. And in the Bible colleges, that is what most of them teach. So what exactly is this thing? What we in this message call the error of Dr. McCroxen. And what is it? It says, be born again by the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost and then subsequently and after that after you have been born by the after you have been born again by the Holy Ghost then you get baptized with the Holy Ghost for power Summarize what his book was teaching is get born again by the Holy Ghost. And subsequent to that, after that, you get baptized with the Holy Ghost for power. This teaching is what most of the churches, especially in Pentecostalism, that is what they are teaching. I can also add that the man was also saying that it's okay for women to be preachers and pastors. That is the other thing he was teaching in his book. And he came about that by his own misconstrued, misconstrued interpretation of Joel 2.28. Joel 2.28, which says, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. The interpreter the interprets that in the book to mean that women have the rights to gospel ministry behind the pulpit as teachers. That is what the Jewish people do. The Bible is made the mistake of splitting the new birth, splitting it from the baptism of the people, bringing it down to He said, There is new birth. And there is baptism of the Holy Ghost. That is actually the summary of what Dr. McCausen is teaching by his book, the title of which I am giving you. Things for the believer, you are going to have two experiences. One is new birth, the second is battle of the Holy Ghost. You don't have to have power to operate. So now that you have seen where the error lies, let's go and address it. By the message. We shall use the scriptures to address this issue, and we shall also quote a lot from.
from the teachings of God's messenger to this day. Our brother William Banner. You may tell you also to know that Brother said for the wife actually thought of these two experiences. You bet very good one. Even Brother Brother in the early stages of his ministry, he actually also thought that when he came back as uh, his ministry started becoming clearer to him. And because he did that, it's also God's way of getting people that nobody that God will use in the Bible. They will always allow something to happen so that you will see that person as a human being. Do you not see it in the life of uh, Noah? Remember, God describes Noah in Genesis as an upright man. You see it in Job, you see it in Abraham, you see it in David. Every man that God will use, God will ensure that there will be something that he will say or do so that you will know that he is not God. That is a man just like you and subject to all the mistakes of a human being. That way, you get to know that he and he alone is God. Even Paul, Peter, you don't see that in the Bible. After Peter had had the Holy Ghost experience on the day of Pentecost, subsequent to that, after that, the Bible described him as a hypocrite. They didn't use the word hypocrite, they used the word dissembler or deceptive. What is the difference? Three feet and one yard. The very difference. So that's all. The word the Bible calls you to be dissembled as we be good for. We today. You have to use the word dissenting, you use the word hypocrisy. It's the same thing. During the war in Nigeria, when the atrocities were being committed against the eastern part of the country, the was in particular, the word we use was pogrom. That word pogrom is today what is called genocide. It's exactly the same word. So God will always ensure that for as long as you are man, you will allow something in your life so that all those who have to listen to you will still continue to see you as a man. End of story. Okay. So, as I said, I'm going to quote a lot from Abraham. I want to read one quote from Brown. He said, Take for instance the book Christ Paralyzed Church Explained by Dr. McCrossin. In it, McCrossin sets forth numerous quotes from many renowned Greek. Grammarians. Remember, the man was the doctor, not the doctor of nurses. We are talking about two weeks ago. So we are dealing with an intellectual. Okay. So, he was uh, 
Teaches. Now the Bible teaches that a, a man is baptized with the Holy Ghost. And subsequent to that, he is also experiencing the Holy Ghost. He, Macrosson, also still flatly that women can take over the pulpit because the world, because the world prophesied, which you find in 228, as I looked earlier, that the world prophecy means to preach. This is what he got from his intellectual accounting of Greek words and phrases. I now said to the prophesy means to preach. And because of that now, he said women can preach. You know that God wants to show you that women cannot preach. We get it straight from the Bible. We don't rely on any grammatical teaching of any man. That doesn't make sense. So, brother, we'll continue. All I'm ready for you now, you'll get it from an exposition of the seven church ages the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's where it is. That is the book. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So, if you want to, what you see happening with all of this, enjoy the Trinitarian spirit of darkness. If anyone try to split the new birth experience from the Holy Spirit baptism, from adoption to authority. An exercise of power. This is like splitting God into three and giving it to a believer. It is nothing but what theology. It is clearly unscripturalized. Let me give you another food for prayer. I want to get my that good food for Again, what the quote I'm going to read for you now for brother, you find it in the seven church ages book. And exposition of the seven church ages. The Spinner George Age. So, if you are checking on the internet, you can go for a check up on the book and exposition of the seven George Ages. And then you can check out the age of Spinner. That's why you are going to get what I'm going to put for you now from that. Um, no, it is not the Bible. It's not the Bible. What we have just set forth could be much easier for all to understand if all believe the doctrine of the oneness of the Godhead. 
you should believe that God is one and not three persons, then you will not run into the error of the of the Marcos. The basic error there is on the issue of three persons in one God. We don't believe that. We know we are right. We know they are wrong. There are no three persons in one God. I want to believe that I should not be discussing that in this talk with the two because I believe all of us are clear what the Godhead is. There are no three persons in one God. What it is in all the churches that I know, Catholic Church, Baptist Church, Presbyterian Church, Methodist Church, Lutheran Church, Olumba, Olumba, Therapy, and so on, and the Sita, what's the other people? Huh? Celestial, Celestial Church. Indeed. Mountain or mountain and fire, mountain of fire, mountain, mountain of fire. Need all the Pentecostal churches. All of them three talk about the Trinity. They call it Holy Trinity. There's nothing holy about the vision of holy. It's a doctrine from the peace of hell. They cannot find it in the Bible. I'm not talking about the word Trinity. The word Trinity is just a quotation. The issue there is that saying this the holy Trinity, God, the Godhead is three persons. Namely, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. And each time I discuss with these denominational people, I always say to them, show me your Bible. So that you know that I don't have Bible different from your own. And show me from Genesis to Revelation. In your own Bible, you three persons in one God, man or woman. Show me. Where you find the expression God the Son and God the Holy Ghost. God made it such that even with all their error, they will not be able to take even their own Bibles. God made it made so that they will not even remember to Mago Mago their own Bible. There is no such expression in any Bible called God the Son and God the Holy Ghost. You will see the Son of God, yes. The Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit, yes. But you will see God the Father. That's all. But you don't have any three persons which are equal. They say they say they are equal, they are co-distinct, they are different from but they all still work together. It's all nonsense. This one that you call God the Father, who is the enemy. When you go and read Colossians, you will see that that creation is attributed to the one you call God the Son. When the angel came to Mary, he made it very clear to Mary that this pregnancy you are going to have is of the Holy Ghost. You know what he said to her? If you say a woman's pregnancy is by your purpose, the child, when it is born, whose child will it be? The child of the Thomas. Very clear. Holy Ghost said to Mary, 
the child the child of the Holy Ghost. When the child grew up, they asked him, who is your father? That child, he was not called Jesus. That my father is God. God sent the angel down to tell them, this child is the child of the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost is the Papa, the Father. The child that came and said, this father is God. Please don't be confused because some of you say, what well, about children do? Who said his father is children do? No, we know that. That is not that his father is of the world. So that's what he said, but that's not a man deceiving himself, a man who is blind to the whole world. God does not lie. So God sent the angel, the Holy Ghost will be the father, is the father. The poor, the young man who is God said, God is my father. So it's either this was had two fathers, one called God, the other one called Holy Ghost, or Holy Ghost and God are one and the same being. Yes. And when Jesus was on this earth, talking to his people, the Jews, he quoted from the Old Testament somewhere. You find that in John chapter 8, I think that it's 8 or something else, or somewhere in John 8. He said to them, This was put to them, If you do not believe that I am He, you will die in your sin. Then if you don't believe that I am true, you will die in your sin. So let's put this in there. He looked at the Jews in the face and said, Your father, Abraham, saw my day. And he was to his father. So where do you find Trinity? And everybody is still going to church. 98, 99% of church world is talking about three persons in one God. And they are expecting to go to heaven to meet this three person God. He is not going to walk. Don't look down on us because we are not a tiny little guy in the fellowship. And so dismiss us. Because you have big churches where you have your doctor of the doctor of divinity, and uh, this man, this doctor, because he has one that is TJ or JT, well, that is one of them. One of these big positions within themselves, TJ, is all about that, that, that. Please, I beg you, don't that. Three persons in one God in your life, not it. It is a doctrine for the gates of hell. If you are expecting to go in the rapture, I'm telling you, on the authority of the Bible, you will not be in the rapture. If what you are believing is that there are three persons. In one God, you will not wake up. Why? Because you don't know that God that you are going to meet when you go in the rapture. You will not see three persons there. You are equal. You are go this, go that, is nothing. There is one person in the Godhead. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Godhead is personified in a body called Lord Jesus Christ. Sorry, sir. Sorry, the question. Yes? Go so, yeah. Can you have a Sorry, sir. Yes. It's asking if God. I have three names. Three names. Names. Uh, what? Well, that's very nice, man. 
But it is still one God. And this one God now incarnated, he came into the body of a man called Jesus. And that God walks on two feet on the face of this earth. And showed every those on the, on the earth like that I am that same God. Nicodemus came to him at night. The first time we heard the word, the first born again. That's the first doctrine of the Lord that was being born again. And then Nicodemus was from the highest level of spiritual authority of Israel. What is called the Sanhedrin. That's why he was published. And then he was told him, that was what he did. He was saying, how can I understand that? And he was saying, how can you be a leader of Israel and you don't know this small thing that you talk? That's a tiny little thing. Everything I told you that you are confused. What if I now tell you about heavenly things? What are you going to do? Then he gave the man the sample. Standing or when they were standing or sitting at the door, but they were together. They looked at the old man, Nicodemus, and said, No man has gone up to heaven. But he that came down from heaven, the son of man. The Nicodemus understood it very well. Then no man has gone up to him to tell that truth. Except he that came down from him, the son of man, I said, then he added the one that confused the Lord. Right now, this son of man is in heaven. The man is looking at you, take the face of heaven. And he tells him to go into the evil writer that says, I'm also a devil. You know, then this one was making his way. This was made me very clear to everybody. Why not this day? I am God. He does not understand that. And so in Colossians 2, the Bible says, In him, Jesus Christ, Dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In Jesus Christ, dwells the fullness of the Godhead body. What does it mean? So when you are looking at that man, Jesus, everything called God from heaven is right inside of that man as you are seeking. He's standing there, but he's still the creator of the universe, right standing there, and he can do what he likes. And he showed it by the miracles and the great things that he did. No human being has ever done that again. Like you see uh, Muhammad taking five loads of bread and feeding thousands. Where well, have you seen the, uh, what the devil called? The Hindu or the other, the sister of the Hindu. Where have you seen that one? Uh, Krishna, I don't know where. Where? Or the Chinese one, Confucius. Where? And all of those ones, they are dead anyway. Their bones are not dead in the grave. They took it to that, including Krishna, including uh, the Mohammed, all of them. They don't even deny it. But there's an empty grave. Somewhere in the 
Therefore, all this project we are talking about is because the life of those former crossing, they are still being deafened by their belief in four persons, three persons in one world. So, Listen again to Brother. What we have just said for will be much easier for all to understand if all believe the doctrine of the oneness of the Godhead. For well, there are not three persons in that Godhead, but one only. One person in that Jesus Christ. Thus, we are not born again by the spirit of life in Jesus coming in, and then Subsequent to that, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, coming in to give us power. He said, that is wrong. If that were true, why are we dishonoring the Father by not giving him a part in our complete salvation? For if salvation is of the Lord, and there are three laws, then he, the Father, must have something to do too. What they are talking about, what is it as uh, new birth, one, then new birth is by Jesus, the spirit of Jesus, then the Holy Ghost baptism. You said there are three persons. Now you give an assignment to Jesus. You give one to Holy Ghost. What about the Father? So you can see it's all rubbish. But surely it can be seen that Jesus made it very clear that it was He and He alone who is God, and it is He and He alone who is coming into the believer. John 14, 16, open your Bible to the book of John. But before we do that, I want you to read 1 Corinthians 12. Just one verse. And the Bible passage we want to start off with. 1 Corinthians 12. I want you to read verse. That is, are we there, everybody? Ready, read. Uh, but I want you to hear it. I will also say one word to you. When I read it, it is all right. When I read it, one or three. And when I read it, one or three. One or three. One or three. One or three. You do all of that. So now, let's go to John, the Gospel of John, verse chapter 14. John 14. Are we there? Let us read verse 16. Is everybody there, man? Where do you live? And what is where you stand? And he can give them a And he can in the name of the Who was saying that? Good. So, John for this city says that the Father will send another comforter. The read verse 17. That was verse 17 says. Even the spirit of truth, all the world are not in me. We are the fear of the Lord. Neither the Lord be seen. For the people of the Lord are the Lord. Because it's that what is the word another? What does it mean? 
It means there's one already. If there's no one already, can you go to another? No. no. So it cannot be more comfortable already. So Jesus is going to ask the Father to send his disciples another comforter. Then we want to explain to them this another comforter who is going to come. The world does not know him. Are you speaking to us? The world does not know him because it sees him not. That's what we call it. Even the soul, even the spirit of truth, which the world cannot receive. The world cannot receive the spirit of truth. What is the problem today? Why are we discussing this subject today? It is because people are not concerned, but Dr. Marcosi, they dispute what we are trying to explain to you. Why? Because people like him cannot receive the truth. And why is that so? Jesus himself answered, because the world seared him not, neither knoweth him. I expect that everybody is listening to the assembly. Lord God. But I fail to see him. But the world does not. What we are teaching here, what we believe here, is not what they believe in Catholic Church. You know what they believe. In the regime, you know what they believe in the Baptist or Methodist. No, but they call themselves church and they're using this same Bible. Yet they cannot see the truth, they cannot receive the truth. Now, but Jesus added, but he brings his disciples. Ye know him. The world did not see him. Jesus was in the world. The world did not know him. He but you will know him. Why? He said, He dwelleth with you. Who was the one dwelling with the disciples? Did he hide himself from the rest of the world? No. He was just looking to receive him. That's all. Just receive him. Receive him. So, but you know him because he dwells with you. What is the next thing you see in your Bible? Look into your Bible. But the world, for the dwelling, for the dwelling with you. And what shall be, shall, he shall pass. Present or future, you say you do that with you. So the you are talking about the church today to see him. The in future, he will be in you. If he's in them, will they see him? No. Huh? No. How can he be in them? Can he be inside of them physically? Huh? If he cannot be inside of them physically, in what form can he be in them? <laughs> they are looking at the man who is dwelling with them, his name is Jesus. Right? So, I mean, what are you? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. This is what they can see physically, they touch him, they feel him. They yeah, are dwelling with you. They say, but tomorrow, in future, I am not dwelling with you. I am going to be in you. What is he telling them? He said to them, You still be physically today. Tomorrow, you will not see because I'm in spirit. I'm going to dwell inside of you. 
What spirit dwells inside of us? Holy Spirit. Just believing Jesus Christ is the Holy Spirit. Sure. End of story. And one you are now called God the Father. Is he a man or a spirit? Is he a sinner or his holy? So if he's a spirit and his holy, if you put it together, what does that give you? So where is this two persons? Where are these two persons? This God is manifested as one person. When you go to where is that in the Thessalonians or Timothy, there is something of God to them. Where is of God to them? What does he say? Who can read that this is the truth of God to them? I think it's uh, uh, 2016, I mean. This is true of either Timothy or Thessalonians. Yes. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Who was manifest in the flesh? What what can I read in the from now? First Timothy 3:16. First Timothy 16. Start again. And without controversy. And without controversy. Grace is the mystery of God. Grace is the mystery of God. We're talking about the God there now. God was manifest in the flesh. God, this one we call God, saying he was manifest in the flesh. You know what? He revealed himself in the flesh. You can see him. When you say God was manifest in the flesh, who did you see? Jesus. God bless you. Carry on. Justified in the spirit. Justified in the spirit. Sin of angels. Yes, yeah. Preach unto the Gentiles. He preached unto the Gentiles. He lived on in the world. He lived on in the world. That's why we're gathered here today. He lived up into glory. He lived up into glory. He ascended. Who is that describing? Christ. Not the Christ. That is all that is called. Nothing again. But man will not accept it because they've gone to school. And you can talk all sorts of things, you know. So, continue. But the program said, that way, this only the father is there. Verse 18, we have verse 23. Verse 23 of John 16. What does it say? God, don't forget, sorry. Verse 23. If a man loves me, then will keep my word, and my father will love me, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. We will come unto him and make our abode with him. Now we'll have looked at that John 14, 16. We we'll have looked at it in verse 18. And the verse 23, speaking to his disciples, he said, We, Father and Son, will come unto him. That thus it is that the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are all coming in at one time. For it is one person comprising the Godhead. And that advent that they are coming, Two days at Pentecost. There are not two comings of the Spirit. There are not two comings of the Spirit. Just one. One coming. The trouble is that people don't know the real truth. And they simply believe in Jesus for remission of sin, but they never go on. To receive the spirit. I talked a lot about this on Friday. Where were you on Friday? 
Let me do your other foods. There's a scripture that many of you know, but I know that you are confused. Galatians 3, 13 to 14. Galatians 3. Galatians 3. 13 to 14. Are we there? No, no, no. Christ is everyone that hangeth on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. In order that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, by no means can it be said that the blessing of Abraham is the reverse. And that the promise of the Spirit is the baptism with the Holy Ghost. That's how they are splitting in the conditionality. What they have done in the conditionality, go to the scripture, they tell you that the blessing of Abraham is the rebirth. That the blessing is the rebirth, but the promise of the spirit is baptism in the Holy Ghost. So if you have two copies, you know, the first scripture to have taken for that reads Jesus died on the cross, and by means of that death and resurrection. The blessing of Abraham came on the Gentiles, leading to Jews. This transpired in order that the Spirit might become available to the Gentiles. You will get to see that in the seven church in this book. I'll give you another quote. To understand what I have just said is to clear up why students. I have never ever found Paul saying at any time, Paul never at any time said, Be born again and then be spirit filled. Paul never said that. He never said, Be born again and then after the spirit filled. They have inferred that it is there. And they put their own millions to make it say it. But scripture does not say that. Jesus never said it either. Look at John 7, 37 to 39, and read it now with another point. So when we when we read that John. Seven, seven to twenty-one, you will get an understanding. All I spent all I brought today to tell you about the error. Tell you about the error. And so 
Seven angels descended on this earth. On Mount Sunset in Tucson, uh, Tucson, America, the world can never forget that day. 
it becomes close to the world. Koro, koro, I, I am still a new child. Yeah, that's the beginning of the Christmas. I think it's December. Because I can tell you that I'm not December 28th or something like that. And I can I can tell you this for you afterwards. Yeah. Was it in the summer that are earlier? No, no, no. This um you know. It was the preacher preaching loneliness and all of these things. But there are some deep things. That is where the conflict needs to be. That is where it is. As I told you, you were saying you know, he preached on the seven seeds. So many people have been preaching on seven seeds. In the case of Martin Luther, those of uh, John Wesley, they all preached on service into our own generation of 20th and 21st century. Abraham also preached. But his master came and told him all these things you people are just told me. But now I will tell you what exactly it is. He told him this before he used to happen. And told him to go and tell the church that it's going to happen. That was why he now took witnesses to go with him the day the seven angels were called. So they were with him on my source. They didn't know how it's going to happen. But moment before it happened, he was he got to go. And he told us to do. They cover and then that means the excuse will happen that the whole American government set up a party. Was it an enemy by that? Because my source said the rock started flying from it. So this is the reported thing that happens physically in America. It is beyond still to everybody knows it is doubtless. Because those who were to collect the pieces of the world, they are still alive. Just as in 1933, when he was baptizing in the that Ohio, Ohio River, and everybody was, people were being picnic, people were enjoying themselves there, and all of a sudden, they saw light descending from the sky. And then he had to stop. They said, What is this? And he was in one corner here baptizing people. And just then, the light came and rested on his head. And then a voice spoke from that light. Nine twenty three, yes. The voice spoke from that light. Remember, we are talking about people who were on the beach and he was baptizing the whole corner. Those who were being picnic uh, were there. Those who just came slowly were there. So be had of activities. And while all this was going on, all of a sudden, Everybody saw this light. Do you think that that time, do you think it's going to shine like such light? And I thought, no. But it was light that drew attention. All the activities stopped, and everybody was thinking, Light, that light, what is it going to? And that kept on coming down until the people arrested over the head of Matanga. I think he was baptizing the 14th man or something. I know the name of the man, everything he had is the same as I don't have here. And then the voice spoke from the, from the light. As John the Baptist foran the first coming of Jesus Christ, so will your message 
Follow the second command. The witnesses gave testimony. They were not members of the church. No. If something happens now, and a general is called, the official of God, when people, when they ask, did you see him? Were you there? And don't say yes, we saw him. Then we have him. So what? So what? No. Does it not mean they're going to start following you? No. Yeah. This is going to happen. It's a strange thing. How can a life just came from there? They will have this thing that there. No one to come with them. Everybody spoke, but that's it. I said that. So it was God's way of trying to introduce you to the world that He has His blessing for the world, for this generation. But the people believe the answer is no. Only to believe. So, well, after 1953, but brother, distance himself from these two colleagues here to distance himself, you know, it is not correct. And there is that tell us of value how it is. Uh, because all these two two colleagues, you see, they are terminologies to describe one experience. Therefore, the new birth, God said, the new birth, you, you know how you put it, you put the new birth, you put equals, you know, you know that equals back, eh? you put it here. The new birth equals baptism of the Holy Spirit, equals adoption. That one experience you get when you are converted, the day you receive the Holy Ghost in your life. That is the new birth. It is the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and it is your adoption. You are all the same. Yes. Yes. Um, who, who are them? Okay. Okay. Let me read you a quote from God. Um, that all this is not one coming of the Holy Ghost. What is the baptism of the Holy Ghost? This is Brian Brown, Putin Brown. So what is the baptism of the Holy Ghost? It is the Spirit, this is just the church. What? He asked the question, what is the baptism of the Holy Spirit? I'm quoting Brian Brown. He said, what is the baptism of the Holy Spirit? It is the Spirit baptizing you into the body of Christ. It is the new birth. So he posed the question to himself. What is the baptism of the Holy Spirit? And he answered it. It is the Spirit baptizing you into the body of Christ. It is the new birth. It is the Spirit of God coming in and filling you after you have repented, having heard his words and been baptized in water as an answer of a good conscience towards God. I'm quoting Brown 
So that way, this is what is it. So the question, what is the baptism with the Holy Spirit? And the answer is like this. It is the Spirit that means the Holy Spirit. In the Holy Spirit baptizing you into the body of Christ. It is the new birth. Are you following me? It is the Spirit of God coming in and filling you. It is the Spirit of God coming in and filling you after you have repented, having heard his word, and you have been baptized in water as an answer of a good conscience towards God. Do you have that church? Or do you want me to say it again? Huh? All right, listen. What is the baptism with the Holy Spirit? Answer, it is the Spirit baptizing you into the body of Christ. It is the new birth. It is the Spirit of God coming in and filling you after you have repented, having heard his word, and been baptized in water as an answer of a good conscience towards God. You find that was in, in, in Peter. In that position. So, what you have just said forth will be much easier for all to understand if all believe the doctrine of the oneness of the Godhead. For there are not three persons in that Godhead, but one person. Thus, we are not born again by the Spirit of life of Jesus coming in, and then subsequent, subsequently, that the Holy Spirit coming in to give us power. No, that is wrong. If that you are doing, you are dishonoring the Father by not giving him a pass in our complete salvation. For if salvation be of the Lord and they are doing us, then he, Father, must have something to do too. For surely it can be seen that Jesus made it very clear that it was he and he alone who is God, and it is he. And here so who is coming into the believer. So I gave one, I gave you those quotes from John chapter 14. And do that verse 14, verse 16, verse 22, verse 18, and verse 23. So the Father, Son of the Holy Ghost are coming in at the one at one time. For it is one person comprising the Godhead. And that advent took place at Pentecost. There are not two coming of the Holy Spirit, just one. So this is what this problem is. And you find that in the, in the uh, seven verses page book. Well, give me another 10 minutes and close, please. Okay. Let's get something so that we can close here. This is what Brian said. 
the so from what I just read to you, you can see therefore that the old Trinitarian devil that this we are talking about doing when he woke up. The old Trinitarian devil, the old Trinitarian devil is exposed by the correction, by the correction, we are getting from this. Make it to comments of the spirit will be to honor the dirty satanic doctrine of Trinity with grand grand crime against. After the angel visited Brennan at Sunset Mountain, he never again tried to separate new birth. Back in the miracles and adoption. Never. He moved the adoption at Mount Transfiguration. You remember Mount Transfiguration Church? That's the uh, Matthew 17. He moved the adoption at Mount Transfiguration to the Jordan River, which is Matthew chapter 3. Where Christ was baptized with the Holy Ghost. He affirms that this pattern holds forever after. So, ministers who are trying to tell you they are too conscious, they are getting in trouble. Listen to what my brother said in the church eight book concerning the church of Valdesia. Brother Brown said, but God is calling for another dream. It is the view to cry, I am wrong. Now, who is going to say that he is wrong? What is it that all the denominations are based upon? They are based on the claim to originality and that God. Authority and that of God. He claimed that they are right. Now they are, they all cannot be right. They are quite a sacrifice, full of dead men's bones. They have no life. They have no justification. God has never himself known, been known in any organization. They say they are right because they are the ones. That are saying it. But saying it does not make it so. They need the vindication, which is thus says the law of God. But they don't have it. So we are going to stop here so that on Sunday, next Sunday, we continue and we want to look at what happened at the battle of Jesus in the Jordan. And what happened at Mount Transfiguration? So I'm going to ask you to please, before next Sunday, please read Matthew chapter 3 and Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 3 tells you about the baptism of Jesus, the portion where he was baptized. See what happened at the point where Jesus was baptized. Look at what was said. Look at what happened and what was said. Then go to uh, Matthew 17 and see what happened when Jesus was transfigured on that Mount Transfiguration. We are going to use those two things in trying to. Tell you about adoption. You remember what we are trying to conclude in this teaching is that new birth, baptism of the Holy Ghost, infilling of the Holy Spirit, adoption, they all mean exactly the same thing. And it must happen in your life and in my life only once. So when 
the Holy Spirit comes into you, that means you are filled with the Holy Spirit. That also automatically means that you have a new birth. That means also that you have been baptized into the body of Christ, as we saw in 1 Corinthians 12. And that means that you have been adopted as a son of God. One thing happens, and you have all of these together as your own. Not that it happened this time, you get that one. They happen some other time, you get another one. Not for other time. No, no, no. It is one happening and getting in, into the new bed, but for the good adoption. You have all of them together. This is the error. In Pentecostalism, it is the error in the denomination. And God is trying to try and explain this to mankind to understand it and solve the thing themselves. You will know it especially if you are passing Pentecostal church. So please let's gather again. Let's not take the Lord time and keep us on that sort of judgment time, and we shall have you. Good work and try and finish it within your that day. But please get your questions ready. You write it down so that at the end of this teaching, we we'll answer all the questions. We go to 14th week. Next Sunday will be 15th week. You have spoken a lot, I think one and a half hours. So just for the time, one and a half hours by the team and see how many hours that will be and ask yourself. Does it mean I would have took everything in those hours? If you have it, then get your questions now. We are going to have one Sunday to deal with all the questions concerning this new death, birth of the Holy Ghost, adoption, and all that. And of course, any other question you have concerning the scriptures. May God keep us with them in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. And so, Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, for us. Teaching us your word, may your spirit has spoken with us to us today. May that same spirit give us understanding of your word that we do not misled because we know that the time to go home by the rapture is very, very close. Therefore, Father God, grant that all that you teach us, every brother and sister is going to understand it and have to understand, and have to understand it. We will help us to do to share with others that no, they will no longer be deceived by all of these false teaching that they are going on. So that when it is time to go home by the rapture, they also will be part of the Jews in that rapture. Let that be a portion of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And we thank you for this day. Brother God, it's a new day, it's a new day. We surrender to you. Have your way in our lives all through this new day, all through this new week. Let nobody ever deceive us in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless God, we walk with our hands. Protect us from Father and from God. Do not allow the enemy to have superiority over us in any shape or form. We thank you because you have answered this prayer. For in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Arise, O Lord God, come down and show all thy mercy. For the time to favor Zion, I will plead the Lord to commission to your head. That is, be the time to favor us with all of them. Be they spiritual or physical, material or financial or medical or marital or whatever. For here the same time is come, and you have said it so. Let this be the time, O oh God, when our prayers are to you be answered. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Receive the priestly blessing. The Lord bless and keep you. Let the sunshine of the Lord and the goodness unto you. Let the countenance of the Lord and the bless you with pleasure to you. The grace. The grace of our Lord. The Lord of the 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 Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.